I think um, A, B, and C should be able to do these pretty fast, right? I, I've done the wrong side of the graph. Yeah, that's not what you And so you spent the next 10 minutes going, oh, I've drawn the wrong side. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, we're really confused. You can really quickly have a look at this by saying, well, I know what the intercepts are. They're going to be negative 2, negative 3. Um, here's a little bit of a dirty trick for you. You know, you're like, oh, your next instinct is, I've got my x intercepts, better put my y intercepts on, yeah? Don't do that just yet, because you'll put your y intercept somewhere, and invariably, you'll make it very difficult for you to like draw an accurate curve that's going to go through there. For a parabola, you have the privilege of being able to say, actually, whatever that happens to be, I'm just going to make the vertical scale so it's 6. Okay? And you can just read that off here. Okay, does that make sense? So that looks all right. A lot better than if you'd said, oh, if that's three, then six is better be about here. Oh no, I've got to redraw my axes. Oh, too hard. So here's our original graph. Now, frequently in extension two, what you will encounter is they'll give you a printout of the graph, and then they will ask you to transform it in some way on top of the graph. So that's what I am going to do. We already discussed what this would do, right? Um, we said that this was achieving what kind of reflection? It's going to be vertical, right? It's going to be vertical. So it's going to go from here down to here. One of the nice ways you can confirm that is when you have a look at when you put in negative 2 and negative 3. Negative 2 and negative 3. What happens when you slap a minus sign out the front? Well, this all collapses to be 0, right? So that's why your x-intercepts, they stay exactly where they, where they were before. So I'm going to get this graph here. I've missed a little bit. So this here is y equals negative f of x, or negative y equals f of x. Does that make sense? You can do the horizontal one as well. That's fine. You can see it's going to go all the way over to the positive side to have roots of 2 and 3. So it's going to be a, b, and c. All right, now let's have a look at this. You can actually see, because I've been a bit sneaky, I've actually already drawn all the bits uh, I need for this. Right? Do you see where they are? So when you apply absolute value, right? Think back, can you think back to complex numbers? When I said that a much better definition for these things is not just take the positive, what it really means is modulus. How far are you from the origin? Does that make sense? Remember that? So the origin along here, remember these are all real numbers and these are all real numbers. We're back on the Cartesian plane again. Oh man, it's not imaginary anymore. Therefore, when I say for a point like this, right, uh, on my scale that looks like something like 4. When I pose the question, what's the absolute value of that? What I'm asking is, how far is it from its origin? Its origin, as a real number, is over there. So its distance is 4. So that's why when I plot it, it just stays where it is. Okay? But then when I come to a point like this, right? by the way, what is the, uh, what is the y value there? Pretty sure it's negative a quarter. Okay, uh, you can go ahead and work that out. Now I'm going to pose the question. What is its distance from its origin? Right? And the answer is, well, if I'm here at negative a quarter, I go up here, there I am, along that real axis. Well, the distance is a quarter. So that's why you get this point up here. And of course, you can connect the dots. And that's why you get this, this bouncy little thing. Because you're constantly just asking, what's the distance? Okay, now I pose this to you, but I gave you no sense of what that might look like. This is a bit trickier. Who's got an idea? I won't put you on the spot now. How many of you have an idea? Hmm. <laughs> yeah? Okay, all right. So here's what I'm going to suggest to you. Let's borrow something we understood from here, which is that if f of x is positive, then the absolute value of that is still positive. Yeah? So in other words, wherever f of x is positive, that's these parts up here, the graph remains unchanged. Yeah? So what does that mean here? I'm going to need a new set of axes. What that means is, for all the parts of that, right, that where x is positive, that's this part of the graph. Right? Do you see that's the entire part of the graph where x is positive? Do you agree? Are you with me? For that, this is unchanged. No change. All right, now tell me what happens when I put something negative in there. If I were to put in, say, like, oh, I don't know, negative 2. Negative 2. If I put in negative 2 into here, 
What's going to happen to that negative 2? It's going to become 2, right? So then this becomes f of 2. Now I can work out what f of 2 is. f of 2 is going to be 4 plus 10 plus 6. It's 20. Okay? So it's like up here somewhere. Yeah? This is at x equals negative 2. Y is going to be up here at 20. Right? How about x equals 1? Uh, x equals negative 1, rather. It's getting a bit closer. Once you put x is negative 1 into here, absolute value is going to turn that into a 1. And then you have to evaluate f of 1, which is 1 plus 5 plus 6. That's 12. So it's like somewhere down here. Right? So in fact, what you're getting, this is why it's under the heading of reflection, is this guy. Do you see it? Right? Like over here, it's behaving just like this guy is, right? Because absolute value has ignored what's happening um, of all this negative x stuff. Okay, right. Who's got a graph for f? Who's got a graph for f? What on yeah. earth does f come on? Yeah, can I see it? <laughs> it's a thing. Okay, alright, let's have a shot. Right. So I um I can put it. So what I'm gonna do again is I'm just gonna draw on f of x. So here's my f of x. Now the absolute value of y equals f of x. Here's the first thing I'm going to note. If I say the absolute value of y is this, then I know. You, remember I said to you, oh, if you put in a positive value inside these absolute values, then they're good. They don't change. If I put a negative value here, if I put a negative value on the right-hand side, what's going to happen on the left-hand side? What's going to happen to the whole thing, actually? You're like, oh, where's the absolute value of y? Like, when is it negative a quarter? Right? And the answer is, it's never negative a quarter because this is asking for a distance, right? So what this means is, anywhere that this right-hand side used to be negative, those parts of the graph don't exist anymore. Okay, they don't exist. Does that make sense? Because you can't get a solution to this, right? There's no y value you can stick in there that's going to give you that. Okay. So therefore, what that means over here is that all these guys down here, they all cease to exist. They're not going to give me anything meaningful. The absolute value of y can't possibly be this. Now, then to push on this a little bit, right? here's what I've got. I've got the absolute value of y equals x squared plus 5x plus 6. Yeah? yeah? Now, we're not used to this, doing this, because we, we just think of it as that bouncy thing. But the absolute value function has a definition, right? The absolute value of a is equal to one of two things, depending on what a is. If a is positive, then the absolute value of a is just... A. Remember, we were just saying it doesn't change. If, on the other hand, the thing inside the absolute value is negative, then what is the absolute value of A going to become? Negative. 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 You slap this negative on it, it double negatives, and that's what makes it positive. Okay, so what does that mean over here? What it means is that x squared plus 5x plus 6 is equal to one of two things. It's equal to something sometimes and something else at different times. Sometimes it's equal to y, and sometimes it's equal to minus y. Which one and when? I can follow this pattern, right? In fact, it's literally exactly the same thing with y's instead of a's. Okay? The absolute value of y, this thing, is just y if y is positive. And look, that's what I've drawn. Do you see that? This is y equals x squared plus 5x plus 6 for y positive. Does that make sense? What about this? When is it negative y? If y is negative. So now, where is this? Where is this part of the graph? It's everything down here. Do you agree? This is where y is less than 0. So can someone tell me, what does that thing look like? Haven't you already drawn it? Look, here you are. Yeah, you drew this in part B. But, 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 it's not, not this top part. Right? Do you agree with that? Because that's not relevant. Do you see that? So I'm just going to draw the bottom parts of the red graph. Like this. There he is. Nailed it. Okay. 
That's the absolute value of y equals f of x.